What's up, it's Cairo. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Magic the Gathering for Beginners. For links for the rest of this series, check out the description below. Today we're talking about a topic that a lot of new players find confusing, but it's an essential part of the game. And if misunderstood, it can create bad play habits that compound as time goes on. Today's topic is the stack. It's not as bad as it sounds. Once you understand the stack, you start to understand why certain cards exist and the ideal time to play the cards that you know. Ultimately, your Magic the Gathering experience will be more fulfilling and more fun once you understand the stack. Let's begin. What is the stack? The stack is a zone in the game where spells and abilities go before they resolve. Or in other words, before they have their effect. The stack exists as a kind of limbo that allows players to respond as things are played or abilities are activated. Think of the stack as a physical stack of cards on your kitchen table that get played one after the other. As a card is played or an ability is activated in response to something, that card or effect is placed on top of the stack. And then the stack resolves from the top down. Let me give you an example to show you what I mean. Let's say that you tap two mana to play Grizzly Bears. Once you announce to your opponent that you're playing Grizzly Bears, your opponent then gets priority, meaning they now have a chance to respond by playing spells or using abilities before the Grizzly Bears hits the battlefield or resolves. At this point, the Grizzly Bears are on the stack, that is, in limbo, waiting to resolve. Let's say your opponent has a counter spell. While the opponent has priority and the Grizzly Bears are waiting to resolve, the opponent may play their counter spell, targeting Grizzly Bears on the stack. The counter spell then hits the stack on top of the Grizzly Bears. That is very important. Now we know that the stack resolves from the top down, meaning now the counter spell resolves before the Grizzly Bears, even though it was played after. When the opponent plays a counter spell, priority then goes back to you to respond. If you do have a response, you play and your play gets added to the stack on top of the counter spell and so on and so forth. If you have no response, each thing on the stack resolves, again, from the top down. Let's say you have nothing to do in response to that counterspell. Well, in this scenario, counterspell resolves first, preventing the Grizzly Bears from hitting the battlefield at all. Both counterspell and Grizzly Bears are sent to each player's respective graveyard, and then priority goes back to you as the player whose turn it is. That was a scenario where you play something, and the opponent plays one thing in response. Let's complicate the scenario slightly. This time, we'll say you have a Grizzly Bears on the battlefield, and your opponent plays a Shock in an attempt to destroy it by dealing lethal damage to the Bears. The Bears have two toughness, Shock deals two, they should be killed by that. After the opponent casts their spell, you now receive priority, and you have a giant growth in your hand. Now, Giant Growth gives the target creature plus three, plus three, until the end of the turn. So let's say you cast your Giant Growth in response to the shock. In this case, your Giant Growth goes on the stack on top of the shock, and we know that the stack resolves from the top down, right? So if the opponent has no other responses to your Giant Growth, the stack resolves and the Giant Growth takes effect, making your Grizzly Bears 5-5. Five, five. Then Shock resolves, dealing its damage, bringing the Grizzly Bears to 5-3 until the turn ends, where all effects are removed and the Grizzly Bears return to a 2-2. Two, two. This is an example of using a spell defensively to protect your creature and prevent it from being destroyed. But does the order in which these spells are played matter? It turns out, yes. It actually matters a great deal. So let's reverse the scenario. We'll say you're about to attack the opponent with your Grizzly Bears. In order to hit the opponent for the most damage, 
you cast Giant Growth on your Grizzly Bears to increase the stats to 5-5 five, five in order to get as much damage in as possible, and you do this before you attack. Remember, your Giant Growth goes on the stack, and the opponent gets priority to respond. Your opponent has a response to your Giant Growth, and they respond with a shock, targeting the Grizzly Bears. Now the shock is on top of the stack, meaning it resolves first. That two damage will kill your grizzly bears before the giant growth can resolve. This means you've not only lost a creature, but you've lost your giant growth. Interactions like these can mean the difference between winning and losing games. They don't seem like much, but they can add up to a lot, particularly when both players are equally skilled. Having a solid understanding of the stack, how it functions, and how it can be used to your advantage will help you win games and help you to have more fun even when playing Magic casually with friends. Should be noted that there are cards out there that alter the way the stack operates, that instantly end the turn or other specific things, but they're generally far and few between and beyond the scope of this video. I sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something and I hope you've got something out of it. If you haven't seen them, I'm going to include the links to the rest of the videos in this Magic the Gathering for Beginners series in the video description. If you like the video, please hit that thumbs up for me and subscribe to get notifications when the next video comes out. Thank you very, very much and I hope you have a great day.